little anomalies of the urinary tract. Part 3, that of the urinary bladder and urethra. Congenital anomaly of the urinary bladder, one of the common condition is congenital bladder diverticula. The incidence is 1.7%. It can be unilateral or bilateral. And uh, there may be a special type of bladder diverticulum called the periuretric diverticulum or the Hutch diverticulum when it is close to the UVJ. So there are three types close to it or um, involving the retrovesical junction and the ureter opens into the diverticulum. There are the three types. And uh, when there is a uh, periuretric diverticulum, vesicoretric reflex of various grade is associated. The diverticulum, the problem is stasis. Stasis of urine which results in the urinary tract infection, incontinence and it can rarely cause uh, urinary retention due to pressure on the urethra. Now here you see uh, urinary bladder. And posterior to the bladder, you see a cystic mass and uh, you see a communication between the bladder lumen and the lumen of the diverticulum. This is confirms that it is a vesicle diverticulum. And uh, another confirmation is the both the bladder and the diverticulum decrease in volume after maturation. And the diverticular can be multiple. And uh, here yeah, seen here, the, the bladder and you see multiple cystic masses with uh, each communicating with the urinary bladder, multiple diverticula. As a complication of the uh, vesicle diverticulum, there can be infection which can be seen as um, debris in the diverticulum. The periuretric diverticulum, here you see uh, the bladder and you see the uh, lower ureter and uh, close to the retrovesical junction there is a diverticulum and uh, with the transfer scan you see the diverticulum is distended and when you do uh, a color doppler you see that the ureteric jet is very close to the diverticulum confirming that it is a periuretric diverticulum that is the video showing the uh, distension and emptying of the periuretric diverticulum so periuretric diverticulum can also cause obstruction to the ureter, now, the, the bladder, periuretric diverticulum, the ureter is dilated and this is the communication of the diverticulum with the bladder. The vesicle diverticulum can be very close to the bladder neck because of its size it can press on the bladder neck or the urethra and cause urinary retention, urinary bladder outflow obstruction. And the perineal scan shows that this is the pubic symphysis bladder and you see the diverticulum is pressing on the bladder neck and urethra causing urinary bladder outflow obstruction. The diverticulum may be associated with uh, calculi as seen here there is a transfer scan. The bladder has got a calculus and there is the diverticulum with the communication there is a calculus in the diverticulum also. There may be a hematuria and uh, as a result of uh, bleeding in the diverticulum that is the bladder one diverticulum there is the second diverticulum and there is soft tissue mass within the diverticulum and um, that is due to a clot with the patient presenting with hematuria and you can confirm that it is clot by shifting the position of the patient you see the clot shifts within the diverticulum and on colored opponent there will not be any flow so here you see the shifting of the clot in the diverticulum with the change in position of the patient nicely shifts so confirms that it is a clot within the diverticulum and very rarely there can be a tumor within the diverticulum that is the bladder and you see the diverticulum and there is an irregular mass at the neck of the uh, diverticulum and dividing the diverticulum into three compartments and when you put on color you will see the flow within the mass so this is a malignant tumor of the diverticulum now next uh, anomaly of the urinary bladder is duplication so duplication of the urinary bladder may occur in the sagittal or coronal plane so this is um, duplication in the sagittal plane it may be incomplete or complete here it is an incomplete it looks like a septum from the dome of the bladder so that is incomplete or it can be complete so you see the two bladders due to complete duplication of the bladder as well as the urethra 
each bladder uh, when there is complete uh, when there is duplication each bladder receives the ureter of the ipsilateral kidney and is drained by its own urethra and it is complete duplication in some cases only one bladder communicates with the single urethra leaving the opposite side obstructed with no outlet so here there is duplication and uh, the right bladder is drained via the urethra but the left bladder is obstructed because there is no communication with the urethra resulting in atrophy of the kidney when there is duplication of the bladder in about 40% there is also duplication of the lower gastrointestinal tract or there can be duplication of the external genitalia as seen here a complete duplication of the external genitalia in male now this is um, transverse scan you see two urinary bladders so complete duplication of the urinary bladder and uh, there is clinically there is complete duplication of the external genitalia in a male so that is complete duplication of the bladder and external genitalia similarly in the female there is two bladders there is two uteri so there is duplication of the genital tract and there is also duplication of the vulva in the female so this is complete duplication of the bladder genital tract and external genitalia in the female this is a 30 year old man presenting with lower urinary tract symptoms and raised renal parameters coronal scan of the right kidney shows mild hydronephrosis uh, coronal scan of the left kidney shows an atrophic kidney uh, with uh, irregular parenchyma gross hydro urethronephrosis and scan through the bladder both the lower ureters are dilated and uh, in transfer scan you see that uh, there is duplication of the bladder there are two or bladders with the asymmetric size of the two bladders and uh, when you put color doppler there is a um, vesicuretric reflex uh, on both sides so bilateral vesicuretric reflex and uh, this is the two bladders one is uh, larger than the other one and after the patient voids the right urinary bladder which was larger is emptied well whereas the left urinary bladder has not emptied it looks larger than the right that means this is not empty so that means it is obstructed the obstructed left bladder so there is a double duplication of the bladder with obstructed left bladder so transrectal ultrasound shows the right urinary bladder con continues as the urethra whereas the left urinary bladder there is no uh, communication with the urethra so that is uh, resulted in obstructed left bladder so that is confirmed and then a transverse scan of the Venus shows the corpora cavernosa, the corpus spongiosum with a single urethra in the corpus spongiosum. So this is by ultrasound, there is bilateral hydrourethronephrosis, bilateral vesicoretric reflex, duplication of the bladder with obstructed left bladder on the single urethra. So this is the complete diagnosis on ultrasound. So bilateral hydrourethronephrosis, bilateral VUR, atrophic left kidney, duplication of the bladder uh, with obstructed left bladder and a common urethra so this is the uh, complete ultrasound diagnosis so to confirm ultrasound diagnosis they asked for mri scan so mri scan uh, the report showed left ureter is not visualized vur could not be assessed urethra would not be commented on ct and ivu are not useful because of renal failure so further uh, attempt to confirm the MCU. MCU showed normal urethra, normal bladder with a vesicoretric reflex on the right side. Because the left uh, bladder was obstructed, puncture of the left bladder was done, which showed obstructed uh, bladder. There is no urethra, but there is vesicoretric reflex with atrophic left kidney. So there is bilateral hydrourethronephrosis due to vesicoretric reflex, duplication of the bladder right with the communicating with urethra left obstructed that is confirmed by this so again with the puncture of the left bladder there is no communication with the urethra so along with the puncture of the left bladder again mc was repeated which showed the normal urethra communicating with the right bladder so there is duplication of the bladder and the left bladder was obstructed so all these procedures were needed to confirm the diagnosis uh, made with a single investigation that is ultrasound. So ultrasound showed all the findings 
and as a single imaging modality. Then we come to uracle anomalies. Now uracle anomalies, uh, between 4th and 5th months of gestation, the uracus obliterates, that is the uracus communicating with the urogenital sinus and the urinary bladder which extends as the allantoic uh, duct outside the umbilical cup. So this gets obliterated to form a fibromuscular strand that is called the median umbilical ligament extending from the umbilicus to the dome of the urinary bladder. The incomplete involution of the uracus results in an embryologic remnant of the allantois. Uracus lies in the extraperitoneal space of Ritzius between the transversalis fascia anteriorly and the parietal peritoneum posteriorly. Histologically, it is continuous with all layers of the urinary bladder. So, anomalies, uracal anomalies can be patent uracus or uracal fistula. So, that is the median umbilical ligament, that is the obliterated um, uracus, which is patent, resulting in a patent uracus or a uracal fistula between the bladder and the umbilicus. Or it can be part of the uracus remaining, that is the uracal cyst. It remains as a cyst along the uracal tract. Or it can be umbilico uracal sinus. Persistence of the uracus, part of the uracus closer to the umbilicus is umbilico uracal sinus. And closer to the bladder, if it persists, it's called the vesico uracal diverticulum. With added to it, there can be occurred abnormalities of abscess, infection in the uracus, or uraco vesical calculus, or it can be uracal carcinoma. So we will see one. Uracal anomalies, the presenting symptoms vary depending on the type of abnormality and the age of the patient. They usually present as umbilical discharge, hematuria, suprapubic pain or mass, urinary infection or umbilical or infraumbilical induration. Umbilical maturation is a rare uh, symptom. Now this is a newborn presenting with umbilical sepsis. And um, there is redness in the suprapubic region. And this longitudinal scan of the suprapubic region in this newborn, that is the umbilicus, and this is the bladder. In between, there is a tender, heterogeneous tract extending from the umbilicus to the urinary bladder due to the infected patent uracus. So, with a um, little older child, you see the infected uh, tender patent uracus from the umbilicus to the bladder. And uh, this is an, uh, in an adult, and with treatment, the whole thing is subsided, and only a necopore tract remains after antibiotics. Now, this is a patient, a child presenting with umbilical discharge, and uh, you see a fluid filled tract extending from the umbilicus to the urinary bladder, so that it is a patent uracus with uh, infection. Now, this patient, um, this was a young boy who presented with uh, umbilical maturation. That is, whenever he passed urine, there was discharge of clear fluid from the umbilicus. So, there is a sagittal scan of the bladder, persistent uracus at the dome, and from the umbilicus down showed, that is the umbilicus, that is the bladder, there is a fluid filled tract from umbilicus to bladder. So, this was when he was um, attempting to maturate, and uh, post voiding, this is collapsed. The tract alone remains. So this is a patent uracus that is um, with a fistula, a vesico umbilical fistula with a patent uh, lumen resulting in umbilical maturation. This is the MCU. You see the urinary bladder and you see the patent uracus, the umbilico vesical fistula, uracal fistula and uh, that is how it appears. Then the uracal sinus, persistence of the uracus closer to the umbilicus. Again, they present as umbilical discharge and in this patient you see the umbilicus and there is an heterogeneous mass extending down from the umbilicus into the properitoneal space and that is the urinary bladder. Another case of um, uracal sinus extending from down from the umbilicus. Another case which is uh, markedly thickened uh, and uh, inflamed uh, uracal sinus in the properitoneal space with uh, inflamed fat around it. That is a transcript scan showing the uracal sinus with the inflamed fat on either side. There can be uracal cyst yeah, or anywhere along the tract and here you see the urinary uh, longitudinal scan that is the umbilicus, the bladder, 
and you see a, a oval cyst in the properitoneal space in the sagittal scan and the transverse scan. So that is a miracle cyst along the midline in the properitoneal space deep to the layers of the abdominal wall. It's typically uracle cyst. Now uracle cyst may be closer to the bladder. Here you see an adult may, female bladder uterus and uh, there is a large cyst indenting on the bladder and when you do a transverse scan there is a cyst with the calculus and when you do high frequency scan you see that the cyst is continuous with the umbilicus confirming that it is a uracle cyst closer to the umbilicus because of the size it indents on the bladder also. Now the psycho uracle diverticulum is persistent uracus closer to the dome of the urinary bladder communicating with it. A varying appearance can be seen. Here you see a cystic mass close to the dome of the diaphragm, a smaller thick walled cyst, smaller uh, thick walled echogenic uh, uh, walls and a very small solid mass. This is the varying appearance of vesico urethral uracle diverticulum. It can be associated with calculus. Now here this is the bladder and you see the uracle diverticulum with calculi in it, the sagittal scan and the transverse scan. Uracovesical calculus is a rare uh, complication of the uh, uracovesical diverticulum where there is calculus formation both inside the diverticulum as well as in the urinary bladder. Now this is a patient presenting with um, hematuria and the scan showed a calculus adherent to the dome of the urinary bladder. So high frequency scan showed this is the bladder, the wall of the urinary bladder in the dome. You see a calculus in the lumen of the urinary bladder which is continuous with part of the calculus which is within the uracal diverticulum. So it looks like a dumbbell shaped uh, calculus in the lumen and as well as in the wall of the urinary bladder. So that is the uraco vesical calculus and uh, during cystoscopy you see the component of the calculus within the urinary bladder and that within the uraco vesical diverticulum and after removal you see the typical dumbbell shaped uh, calculus this is the intra vesical portion and uh, this was in the wall of the urinary bladder in the diverticulum. This is a rare uh, form of uracal abnormality. Now, acute abnormalities associated with ura persistent uracus or abscess. Now, this is uracovesical diverticulum, patient presenting with fever, suprapubic pain and uh, dysuria. That is the bladder and you see the persistent uracovesical diverticulum with inflamed fat around it. It is tender and you see the inflamed fat in transverse scan. And uh, this is abscess in the uracle vesico diverticulum. And rare uh, condition is uracle carcinoma. This is a sagittal scan patient presenting with uh, hematuria. And that is the bladder. In the dome of the bladder, there is an irregular heterogeneous mass. And uh, on high frequency, there are enlarged lymph nodes in the peritoneal space. Uh, so confirming that it was a uracle carcinoma. Another example of uracle carcinoma irregular thick walled uh, cyst close to the dome of urinary bladder and then color there is uh, flow within the thick walls with a low resistance flow indicating that it is uracal carcinoma. Now uracal carcinoma can bulge into the bladder as seen here. You see the bladder and you see an irregular pyramidal mass protruding into the bladder from the dome of the bladder with an irregular mass in the wall. So this is uracal carcinoma with uh, extension into the lumen of the bladder and color doppler shows flow in it with a low resistance flow pattern uh, confirming that it is uracal carcinoma. Now coming to congenital anomalies of the urethra, the, the most common one is the posterior urethral valves in males and uh, this is the most common congenital obstructive lesion of the urethra occurs in the boys and uh, it is formation of a thick valve like membrane from the tissue of Wolfian duct origin which causes obliquely from the vermontanum to the most distal portion of the prostatic urethra and uh, it is uh, looks like a diaphragm but during voiding it becomes bilobed and sail like causing obstruction to the flow of urine. So in Mischeritank cystotherogram the posterior valves appear like this. There is uh, on ultrasound, there is bladder trabaculation or wall thickening or diverticular. There may be vesicoretric reflex with gross hydronephrosis and dysplastic kidneys. 
VR occurs in about 50% of patients and you see dilated posterior urethra either at rest or during voiding with a narrow anterior urethra there may be perinephric urinoma or urinary ascites as complications due to breach of the urinary bladder or the calyx the findings are highly variable depends on the patient's age and degree of obstruction now this is the newborn with an antenatal diagnosis and uh, scan shows the bilateral grass hydronephrosis and uh, hydrourethral nephrosis and the uh, sagittal scan of the bladder shows uh, thick walled bladder with uh, trabeculae transabdominal scan shows dilated posterior urethra at rest itself so that is classical posterior urethral valves now here you see bilateral grass hydronephrosis and the abdominal scan shows thick walled urinary bladder but the posterior urethra is not dilated and uh, either with um, voiding or uh, suprapubic pressure the posterior urethra dilates confirming that it is posterior urethral valves by seen by transabdominal scan with pressure or voiding with bilateral hydrourethral nephrosis this is the video showing at rest there is no dilated posterior urethra when the child voids you see the dilatation of the posterior urethra which is like a pyriform cystic structure on the posterior pap so that is posterior urethral valves now here another patient with bilateral hydrourethral nephrosis and bladder shows thick walls and perineal scan uh, shows at uh, rest there is the posterior urethra is not dilated but when with the pressure suprapubic pressure or when the child voids you see huge dilatation of the posterior urethra and the narrow anterior urethra it's confirming that it is posterior urethral valves and we'll see the video showing at uh, rest there is no dilatation in the child voids you see the thick walled bladder and you see the dilated posterior urethra and a narrow anterior urethra confirming that it is posterior urethral valves so this is called sonographic micturating system urethrogram which can be done uh, with placing the probe in the suprapubic region or in the perineal uh, region so that is sonographic micturating system urethrogram to diagnose posterior urethral valves the technique has been described in the text Now, next uh, anomaly of the urethra is anterior urethral valves. It is an isolated entity or in association with a proximal diverticulum. So that is anterior urethral valves. This is with a diverticulum. Anywhere in the anterior urethra, findings are highly variable. Depends on the patient's age and degree of obstruction. On ultrasound, the urethra appears dilated, proximal to the valve, and narrowed distal to it. So this is the perineal scan in a child showing the bladder. we big symphysis urethra so urethra looks normal and if you see closely there is a oval cystic structure indicating that it is a diverticulum anterior urethral diverticulum so when the uh, child voids the urine enters the diverticulum causes obstruction to the urethra producing obstructive symptoms so this is a child with bilateral hydrourethral nephrosis and bladder shows thick walled and perineal scan at rest uh, the urethra is normal but you see the diverticulum and when the child voids you see the grass dilatation of the posterior urethra anterior urethra up to the diverticulum so that is the anterior urethral valves or diverticulum and uh, that is the micturating stratigram confirming the anterior urethral valves here again the diagnosis is made by the sonographic micturating system stratigram this is the video showing the normal uh, urethra at rest and with voiding you see the dilated posterior urethra anterior urethra up to the diverticulum so in, when the child is not voiding you see the diverticulum and the anterior urethra is narrow so this is anterior urethral valves diagnosed by sonographic mcu the difference between posterior urethral valves and the anterior urethral valves in the posterior urethral valves only the vertical portion of the urethra that is the posterior urethra alone is dilated so it's the dilatation stops at the junction whereas in anterior urethral valves the posterior urethra as well as part of the anterior urethra the horizontal portion of the urethra also is dilated to varying extent so that is the difference between posterior and anterior urethral valves urethral diverticulum usually occurs in females and uh, as shown in the schematic it's rare and unique incidence is very rare and uh, it can be congenital or acquired 
presence as recurrent UTI, dysuria, post void dribbling, dyspareunia, or acute retention. So, this is again diagnosed by perineal scan. The technique has already been described. This is the schematic and this is the uh, perineal scan. You see the bladder, the urethra, the vagina, and you see the diverticulum. And this is by the endovaginal scan. This is the bladder urethra and you see the uh, diverticulum and the communication with the urethra and you can see the same with the uh, real time you see the bladder the urethra and you see the diverticulum and some debris and you see the communication with the urethra and with pressure you see the debris entering from the urethra into the diverticulum so that is urethral diverticulum now anorectal malformation can present with uh, the high type can present with recto urethral fistula so that is again uh, anomaly of the urethra and low arm can present with ano urethral fistula now ano urethral fistula we see in an ultrasound by perineal scan in a case with uh, rectal malformation you see the dilated uh, rectum there is no continuity with the anal canal but you see gas bubbles and you see a gas outlined tract extending from the anal canal to the urethra, the penile urethra. So that is how it is there and that is the perineal scan. You see the tract. So that is anorectal fistula in a case of low anorectal malformation. This is outlined by gas bubbles. Thank you for your attention.